G'day and welcome. So on this channel we've restored some cars, um, some motorcycles which I'm yet to finish, uh, lawn mowers, we've done household electrical appliances and all sorts of stuff. I've got a very eclectic range of interests but today we're going to be looking at a cheap Stratocaster guitar. Now the issue I've got is I know how to ride a motorcycle, I know how to drive a car, I know how to mow the lawn, I know how to operate a washing machine, but I don't know how to play a guitar. So I don't know that I would sit there and watch a video of someone repairing a car that didn't know how to drive one. <laughs> so I'm going to have to learn a couple of chords or whatever so that I can at least use it. Um, it's really my children I'm thinking of because one of my daughters is particularly interested. So, um, I got this thing a long, long time ago, 1994, never used it, and now it's trashed because we lent it to somebody who buggered it up or busted it up. So, I, I'm going to try. We'll see how we go. But, with that being said, I hope you enjoy. Well, this is something different. I've got a guitar, and it's knackered. It's a crappy little... Uh, Samic Strat copy. Now my mother gave me some money for my birthday back in about 1994 and I bought this to learn how to play it. And I bought a book with it and I never did it. You know, it just sat there. Brand new. And then I think about five or six years later, one of our friends had a son that wanted to learn. And I said, well, don't buy one. I've got one. And just take it and use it and just give it back when you're finished. And they were reluctant to give it back because there was a bit of damage done. So we're missing bits and pieces. Now, strat copies are very, very common. Um, <coughs> I'm going to fix this one up and try and figure out how to play it. But the, um, it needs re-stringing. Hang on a minute. And try and <laughs> figure it out. The strings are all black, actually. They're just knackered, so we'll put some new strings in it. But I think... What I'll do is I'll just loosen them off and restring the thing. I think that's probably the best way to start. Tune it and then maybe I can get on and learn how to play Blackbird as well. Now this is a Samic. It was, when did I get it? 1994. I think it was $275. And I thought it was a rubbish guitar because it's $275. But every review I've looked, I've been looking recently. Oh, wrong way. I, I can't find anyone that's really knocking them. They say everyone seems to like them. They've got them. They're known to be built quite well. And oddly enough, are they, they're sort of rebadged as other brands, which I think is quite a compliment to them. Uh, Korean brand. But apparently they're churning out about a million a year of them. I don't know. But everyone that seems to review them seems to like them, which I find quite intriguing, given that they're very, very low-cost, entry-level things. Okay, okay. Right, so this is one of the low-cost Samix. It's a... It's got knocks all over it. It was immaculate when I first had it. It's all bashed up and this sort of stuff, but there's nothing on that plate there. Sometimes they have a zero in them and everything in there. This has got a sticker on it. Let's just take stuff off, eh? Now we do have to clean it all up. All the frets. These are all good. They're not sort of damaged at all. Probably because it hasn't had any use. But they're all sticky and horrible. But they're not sort of poking out from the side. Um, the pickups in it are dirty all over the surface of them. The um, guitar is actually in reasonably good condition, considering. And I'll have to get a smaller screwdriver to get that plate off the back. I want to have a look. See what makes this little guy tick. Now another thing I've noticed is this is all loose. That sort of socket jack there. Um, it's just a bloody mess. <laughs> It's never had anything done to it though. It's never had any truss rod adjustment. Taking this off will divulge a couple of things. I, not just where the strings are anchored, I guess, but also if it's plywood or solid wood, I don't know what it is. 
But as I said, I haven't seen a review on these where anyone's really bagged them. Solid wood. No, plywood with a veneer on it. And it's got an earth wire there, which we have to unpick. We got that out. There's a string that's sort of stuck in there. This little bloke, I can't get it out. Um, oh, it's in this one. Do I have to take, maybe I have to take that out. That's not good though. It's this one here, I've got to dig that out. Now from what I've seen with some people um, doing videos on these, it's not actually advisable. Well, some people don't like you taking all the strings off at once. Like they do one at a time to keep pressure on here. Is it supposed to be sitting like that? Um, this is so gummed up and horrible. But its bones seem to be pretty good. Oh, one thing I want to do is I want to take the knobs off and have a look at those. These screws are all sort of gummed up and some of them look a bit rusty. It's just a pretty messed up looking thing. But let's take this off. I've never taken this apart before. I've got no idea what I'm doing. And I know, I know nothing about guitars. There you pickups. Oh, gee, let's pull that out. All right. What have we got here? I think contact spray and these will probably help. Where's the, um, just let me pull that out too. Let's have a look at this guy. Let's just give this a big Rico. I might be able to get some better quality fittings even if I can't play the thing. All right, let's just cut that off. That um, thing, just a bit of coax. We can solder that back on, that's cool. And I've left how it was originally done. But this is all messed up and the the pots are shifting i've got to take those off i just want to have a look at it there's no electrolytic capacitors there so i won't need recapping it's only got that the one there and i'm not going to bother changing pickups because i don't even know how to play the thing but aside from that i just want to remove this i want to clean the case right up a lot of manufacturing crap in there but you know, I think we can get this back. I'm just gonna pour it, put a tape over there, just on the off chance that they have to stay in a given order. Um, can I take that off? I don't even know if I can. Hang on, what are we doing? What are we doing? Where's the other screw? There's a screw under there. Guitar people watching this are probably saying, you have no idea, and you'd be right. I don't have any idea about what I'm doing because I've never done this before. I just like the mechanical side of it. All right, so what's involved with this? Let's have a looky. They're just wood screws, I think. Yes, they are, and they're screwed into the ply, but they're very deep. Well, they are deep. These guys, I think, go into that duver underneath that holds the springs. Is there another screw? In? Oh, it's another one under there. Bugger it. I'm going overboard with this. I'm sure you don't need to go this far, but I want to take it outside and blow all this manufacturing soot out. Where the hell did that go? Um, here it is. And just clean the thing up. I might hit it with a buff, really buff it up. It's got a lot of dried up rubbish on it there that doesn't seem to want to come off. Right. That little block of crap should come out, which it did. There it is there. So that's all sort of empty at the back. That can stay there. I'm not worried about that. And I'll take this bloke off and polish it up and... It probably wouldn't hurt. I looked on eBay 
And the problem with eBay is you're going to get a lot of crap. But I did look, and a lot of these parts aren't terribly expensive. Even these things with fender marked on them, you know, because it is a fender copy, aren't expensive. There's all sorts of scratch plates you can get and pickups and all sorts of things. But I don't know how far I want to go with it because it's just, you know, a cheap, rubbishy old guitar. I'm not taking the neck off though. I don't want to take that off. There's a truss rod in there. It's all aligned and set up. So that's staying and I'll just clean around it. But anything that's got the electronics or mechanicals in it aside from that, I don't mind taking out. It's a little bit lighter. That's just plywood. Like when they make skateboards, I'd imagine they'd have a bunch of them all in a stack and they'd just put them in a press with glue around them and stick a veneer on the top, which is quite a thick veneer, you can see in there. That's a good two and a half mil or so. So it's, yeah, it doesn't look bad. I'll just clean it out. But, um, <laughs> all things considered, it's not that bad. The, um, <coughs> this part though, there's a foul. I've got, I should have probably done this before I undid it. Because they do look a bit mangy. They move all right though. So it's volume, tone, tone. I don't want to forget that. And one of the tones seemed a little bit loose. I think it was that one at the bottom. Yes, it is. It's loose. And those screws, it's just, it's been in not very ideal storing conditions. So I want to go through all this. I'll check resistances too, because I can find those out. And maybe put contact spray in the pots and in this five position guy as well. Yeah, I lied. I did take it off. <laughs> well, I want to take the plate off the back. There's actually not much to this. I thought the rod would come through and into the casing, but it doesn't. This just makes it easier to clean up and to work on, and then I can just put the neck on later. And I can sort of clean that up separately as well. Did you have a good look at that? How grotty it is? Right, so here's the gubbins, the workings. These are all staggered, although I think someone's messed around with it. It's awfully low, that side. I think it's just been over-tightened. I'm not sure. I've certainly not played with any of that. It could have been the kid that used it uh, in the time it wasn't here. But... One thing you do hear a bit about is resistance, pickup resistance. Um, and these are very dirty. I've tried with a bit of scotch bright, very fine scotch bright, just to try and clean up any rust or bits and pieces that's sitting on the surface of it because that will act as an insulator. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a bit less than ideal. But having said that, the resistance of them is something that people seem to regard as quite important but there's a lot of variables in it um, and that'll come down to the gauge of the wire on the coil how many turns there are the distance from the string all sorts of stuff i would think um, so you know two um, instruments that have identical resistance won't sound the same i wouldn't have thought uh, what have we got gray these are all coaxial um, or they appear to be coaxial and they're all earthed on that the back of that pot. The pots are all earthed together, and then that's earthed onto a sort of a cleat where the springs on the whammy bar go to. So I'm just going to pop it in between these. So each coil has the, the inner wire, the shielded wire, is going to each of those three positions on this switch and they're all earthed through the body of that pot, which then there's a piggyback going on to each one, to each switch, like that, those black ones, as well as this prison uniform one, which goes to the cleat. So I'm just gonna go between each one and measure its resistance. I don't expect to gain any knowledge out of its resistance, I just wanna make sure they're not open circuit, because um, that would mean they don't work. So the grey one, this pick up here, goes to the bottom of that switch. So that measures 4.3 kilo ohms. 
So that's all right. And we'll just leave that there. The middle one, which is that? Middle one's the yellow, yep. Oh, so they're all proportionate to each other. 2.2, .2, that seems quite low, but it doesn't matter. And the upper one would be the red one, which goes, oops, there, which is the same, 2.2. .2. Right, okay. So I know none of them are open circuit. So I'm going to pull this apart. It's gross and it needs a good clean. Um, and I'm just going to use a tube socket. And that is just messed, messed up. It's so full of, sh well, stuff that I'm not allowed to say here. It's gross. I'm actually going to drop them in thinners. I've got some thinner in the garage. In fact, all the fasteners on this thing are just foul. Um, and I don't know why. Um, for doing the knobs themselves, they're yellowed, a bit like a computer case. Um, there is a guy, 8-bit guy, that refurbs computer stuff. And he retrobrites them. It's just peroxide, I think. And then you wrap them in glad wrap. You, put, you sort of soak them in this peroxide. Wrap them in glad wrap, and then on a nice hot day, you leave them out in the full sun, and it bleaches them back to their original colour. Right. These screws do look fiddled with, and I've never touched them. And it just feels so bad. I'll throw them in the thinner as well. All of the screws on the whole thing are going to get thrown in thinner. I just want them cleaner. There's springs underneath these as well. So you can set up the depth of your pickup. Right, so they've got springs. They're all magnetic, that's cool. They're supposed to be. We'll take all these springs off. Actually quite oh I can oh wonderful. I can actually take these off and clean them. Oh, that makes a world of difference. I didn't know that. I don't know much though. Remember, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, that's so much easier. Oh, sweet. Good. Cool. Heavy little suckers. So, I'm going to just move these <laughs> without breaking any wires. I'm going to pop them over there. Now, for this sort of thing, I've bought some cleaning solution which is this stuff. Um guy in the music shop said he uses it for drums and cymbals and all sorts of stuff. They've got plastic on it. I thought it would have been the plastic when it was brand new. Huh. Gosh. Anyway. So they say this goes a long way. Oh, they also say don't spray it on the surface. That's not that bad. Look, it's not going to remove swirls or anything like that, but that looks good. It feels nice and smooth anyway. It's these sorts of things that have yellowed, um, which won't help its appearance, really. But I don't think it matters. It does sort of... It is a very old... Well, not very old compared to some, but... It is old, it's 20, it's only 30 years old, this thing. So we'll just get rid of the rest of that, but that looks like it cleans quite well. It certainly feels good. Um, and we'll do the rest of the guitar's body with it. So anyway, that can stay to the side. These things look awful. All right, so all we're doing with these is just using the paper wet and just rubbing off the yellow. Now this is an awfully thick plastic, right, it's flimsy, we do have to be kind of careful, but once we do that we hit it with the 1200, or the 2000, sorry, and just get rid of all those 1200 scratches, and then once it's a 1200, or 2000 rather, you can either leave it, which will dry a flat, or you can polish it, and it'll come nice and shiny again. I'm going to stick my fingers, my fingers do fat to fit in them. But that's the sort of thing 
I don't know if you can see, that one's yellow. There's still some yellow down the bottom of this middle one, and that's the one that I've finished. So, look, it isn't a crucial exercise. It's just something that's, you know... And the other thing is, it's quite likely that if I learn this thing with any sort of skill, the first thing that's going are the pickups, because they'll be rubbish. Um, it's a cheap, cheap guitar. eBay and... What is it? You know, shops sell all these sorts of things anyway. So they're, they're actually quite easy to replace. I'm not going to bother. I'll just get a toothbrush, warm water, and I'll clean out the little flutes in it so they don't look so dirty. These things always look pretty rubbish if they're yellow. And you don't immediately notice it until you stick it in and you see it next to the other. I use a car buff. Um, I hung on to it while I did it, which is dangerous, but that's what I do. And you can see they look so much cleaner and fresher. There, there's still some yellowing around the periphery, but I'm not going to bother with that. Right, well, I think we're good. We've got them done. Um, this thinner was crystal clear. <laughs> and they're just the um, fastens that we had in here. I don't want um, any of this getting onto the bench because this is a laminate and laminates and thinners don't get along. Um, so, I think I'm just going to take my iPad this and dry it. Hang on, I need to see what I'm doing. Um, and then we can start going about putting this together. Now, one of the issues that I'm having with this thing, that looks a bit better, is, um, well, one of them was that this stuff was all sticky and you don't need to know anything about electronics to know that electronic stuff is sticky. Shouldn't be. I would like a new set of fasteners for this, to be honest. I mean, those springs don't look too bad. But some of the rest of it still looks fairly mangy but it is what it is, right? Right, yeah, so I've got this sitting here. I'm just gonna pop these little hoods on. I've cleaned these up. The natural thing, these are zinc plated, these magnets. They're all magnetic, obviously, coil of wire. And as the string vibrates, it's gonna change the electrical pulse in there. There's a very close correlation between magnetic field and electricity. Um, so I'm gonna pop those on. And Right, I think they're in the right order. And then I'll just stick this over. There's a switch in here somewhere. Where's that? There we go. Good. We're getting there. Um, right. These screws didn't turn out so well. I would change them out. But I don't think I've got anything the same as that. Now the pickups, you've got a spring and you can adjust the depth of them and someone's fiddled around with it and I know that because I didn't and only one other person's had it since I did. What's the best way of doing this? I don't know. I've got no friggin' idea. The right way? Yeah, well that's not something I'm doing right now. <laughs> if only I knew. Right, we've got to put screw and spring so I can adjust the depth of it which this is probably crazy the way I'm doing this, but Okay. They look nice when they're white and they're not yellow. But anyway. Hey Dad. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about the tea. No. What? I was gonna do something mean. Um like this. I've got a recommendation to anyone watching this, have kids, <laughs> or not, it's your choice. <laughs> Code word for meditating. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I meditate all day long. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right, we've just had a, a really dirty joke. Anyway, you can see it's just still yellow, it doesn't matter, we get new ones if we want, we're not going to bother, let's face it. One thing I do want to do, I always use this, which is electrical clean and lube. There's very little wear. I can see the contact areas in here and they're virtually not worn at all because 
the only sort of work it's done has been um, basically unplugged. I'm sure. But I'm going to shoot some in these potentiometers. They do feel good, but they do also feel a little bit gluggy. And given the amount of snot that was in here, I would say, see that just feels so much better. Like that is just so much easier. That one's not. Right. That feels great, that one. Let's go for a second dose. Let's feed it into there. Okay, I think we got it. Oh, yes. That's perfect. Okay, that's excellent. And that feels far more positive as well. I'd say that's a chicken dinner. A winner winner. Right, so I'll go and get the body and we'll have a bit of a chat about that. Right, the main body is ply and deemed not as good as a solid base, but there are advantages with using ply and that's that it's strong. So basically it's different laminates of timber with the grain stacked opposite one another. So it's naturally very strong, very stable, which is why they use it for structural beams in buildings. This one has a laminate top and bottom of a different type of timber. I'm not really sure what that is. And the reason they've done this sunburst um, arrangement, paint job on it, is to cover up the edges of the laminations. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And these cheap strats, or any cheap guitar for that matter, would have, with a, with a plied body, would either be a solid color or a burst sort of thing like this. Um, just to hide those laminations. Now, given that it's ply, it doesn't bother me at all because it's going to be very, very strong, very stable, particularly as you've got six strings trying to pull the neck this way. It's going to be very, very stable in that way. So another advantage, of course, <clears throat> is it won't have a tendency to split um, or shift around. So with that being said, it doesn't bother me at all that it's ply. Now, this has been wet sanded so <clears throat> what I imagine if, if Samic or a company like that is throwing a million guitars a year at, which is what I've read that they did, these would be all rotating, um, whether they be vertical or horizontally, it doesn't really matter. That will be rotating. The guns would be stationary. They'd lay the black down. Then in the next station, they'd clear the whole thing. It has been wet sanded though. You can see evidence of all that wet sanding dust inside, which I've attempted to get rid of. Um, so I'm looking at this thing and there's a couple of knocks in it, like there, it's on the black part and I'm in two minds, it's not really black, it's like a burgundy almost, but it looks black. Um, if there was a small chunk, big chunk, whatever sort of chunk out of it, I wouldn't think twice, I would fill it and clear the thing again, clear it back with some 320, 400 and I would just clear the hell out of it and then, um, you know, it'd be worth it if it was a more valuable guitar, like a Gibson or something like that, or a Fender. But this is a cheapie, so I'm not going to bother. But to get that finish, you could get a lot better than this by clearing it, sanding it back, wet sanding it back, letting it sit, clearing it again. So you're flow coating it, and then you just buff the snot out of it, and you could shave in it. And that's what I would aim at if it was a better instrument, but it's not. It's just a cheapie. So I'm not going to bother with all this sort of stuff, but I will give it a clean with this stuff that I got from the guitar shop. Having said that, um, I don't know what sort of clear this is, but I would use, if I was to do it, I would use a full automotive clear because it's really, really high quality stuff. So this stuff is a cleaner. It's not going to get rid of swirls. It does look a little bit better in cleaning it, but it's not, um, as I said, not, I don't think it's worth getting carried away with it. Right, well, I've given this a bit of a clean. It's okay. I think it's going to be okay. I'm just going to put the bridge on. Now, I haven't got... There were two of the string saddles missing. And I've gone to the local music shop and I've ordered some. And I've asked that they get... Um, I think they put their order and he said, oh, I can be up next week. I said, can you get it any quicker? So, these just use a large sort of self tapper type arrangement. Wood screw. 
The other thing with, uh, one thing I can't say from a physics point of view, um, I can't comment with a plywood body how it would react in terms of harmonics. I don't know enough about it. Um, anyway, I'm just going to screw this down. So being a mechanic, we always, when we tighten things down, start from the inside and work out. Now I don't know if, you know, guitar people do that, but okie dokie. So I guess we're going to drop this bloke in now. I'll have to, um, he's just got machine screws that fit in there. I don't know why I did that. I don't think you need to. I'll go from the middle first. Although well, some blokes do it a different way. I saw a guy doing it this way, which is probably the better way. Well, that's easy. That's much easier, isn't it? I'm just going to pull it up with these pliers, drop it in, and we're going to place. These are Nipex pliers. Once you've had a pair, you won't ever look at another brand. Right. So now we've got to put electronic -y stuff in. So we've got this wire that goes down to the, what do you call it? The plug that you plug the thing in with. There's a little hole there. And we've just got to feed that through. And there's also the earth, which is this bloke. And it goes down into where those springs are that where we were just a second ago. So I'm just going to pull it up like this and feed it through and grab a hold of it. I actually had to modify that a little bit because it was sitting proud. Oh, that's cool. Nice and tight too. All right, let's just flip him over and join that earth again. And then I think we're good. Right, well, I've just tucked that wire in so none of those springs can get into contact with it. I've finished this for now. I need to get it. I've only got four of these um, bridge saddles. So I bought strings and all this sort of stuff, but I can't use anything at the moment. Um, so I'll put this to the side with the view of having a look at this neck, and it is vile. It's got, I don't know, you can see a film. I don't know if you can see from there. It's got a chunk, I don't know, it's got a chunk there, but it's got a film of grease and just gross crap through it. Um, again, I'm going to use this stuff and just see if it shifts it which it doesn't seem to as well as I hoped right well guitar connoisseurs are probably frowning or about to because I've tried everything on this and I cannot shift it except for using automotive wax and grease remover it's the stuff you use on a car before you paint it um, it's solvent based, which I don't like. I don't know what these inlays are, if they are inlays or stickers. No, they seem to be inlays. And so I'm worried about that. But it's the only stuff that's going to move it now. It's got a nice satin finish. It feels nice now. But kitchen cleaner didn't work. 
that guitar cleaner stuff didn't work. It's just really vile stuff, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. It's probably just years of nonsense that sort of gathered itself on there. So now I'm going over it with this stuff. And I just want to make sure it's really clean before I start fingering it. I could probably have rephrased that better. It does feel much, much, much better now. You just hang on to the edge of it, leave it short on this side, you go right up to the fret. I just crease it with a fingernail, you run across and then off the edge and you can just peel it off and it's nice and easy and quick. I only just figured that out, I didn't know it before. Anyway, what I'm going to do, let me put that one there quickly, alright cool. Alright, so what we've got is we've got the frets all exposed, looking at them, they're not that bad, although up here there's a few dents in them. Um, being a cheap guitar, they're probably not made from the best material. I'm using, I'm going to use 0000 or Quato steel wool. Use it for polishing chrome and run across each fret and that will clean it up sufficiently to enable them to work to their best ability. I would think. Oh, when you cut those tapes, or would use a brand new blade, we don't want to cut into this at all. I just scat it along the top and it came off without cutting into anything in there. Uh, I guess it's time to put this guy on. And there's a couple of things. This was shimmed. And it was shimmed with these two shims. And they were sitting forward of those two front holes. And then the neck was on over the top of that. It's actually longer than I thought. Sort of like that. Ivy, go away. Go away. And we've got these. Well, I'm not going to bother putting this plate until I've strung it. This is a bit easier to get access to the holes. But there's not much more we can do now. It looks pretty good. If I flick it over and just look along it, it should look quite true. But I think it does. Right, well I can't do too much more now because I've actually busted the nut up here. I put the string on the wrong way, which shows me being a novice indeed. Um, I've still got a low E though. Anyway, look, what we're going to do is a bunch of adjustments. Um, I'll have to get a new nut for it and put that in, string it, tune it, um, there's a couple of other things we need to do as well. We've got to check, we've got to check the intonation to make sure that it's going to hit, a, hit the right note, not be flat or sharp. And that's done with these adjustments here, right? Also, this, the action's really, really low at the moment. It's buzzy. And I've got that right almost at the top of its adjustment there. So there's a good chance the neck's out of whack too. And so we have to check that. Um, the other thing is the pickup height, of course. I'll just put all these back in, in roundabout sort of order. There was no real, um, I didn't follow any rule to putting these in, so these can be adjusted with these screws here. There's springs behind each of these pickup coils. Um, and so on and so forth. So, I can't do much more for now. Uh, we've got to look at the neck. We've got to string it, tune it, and set up the action, set up, set up the intonation, give it another 
um, tune, set the height, and we're good to go. So that's all I can do for now. I feel kind of bad that I didn't do more. Oh, one more thing. Five Star Music and Ringwood, very reasonable. Uh, now this is a shop, this, this guitar came from them. I think it was Helmets Music back then, uh, in 1994, of course. They were about to go under, I thought, into some sort of receivership, but there's a new owner there, and I found them very, very good. And of course, I went in to buy all this stuff, and they said, you know, what, what playing style do you have when I was talking about the strings? And I said, I don't have one, because I don't know how to play it. And, you know, they didn't laugh or anything. They just said, yeah, fair enough, you know. He's, he's starting out in this sort of business, so it's all good. Um, the strings, I everyone seems to bang on about nines. It refers to the uh, size of the string, the thickness of the string itself. Um, this being the low E string is 46 thousandths, um, 10 thousandths for the high E, which of course is the smallest one that goes on this side. They're numbered 1 through 6 from the highest side to the lowest. Um, and if you think about thousands of an inch, well, 40 thousandths of an inch is about a millimetre. So anyway, the slightly thicker string he recommended for me, uh, and he also said it'll retain its tune a little bit longer. But look, that's all for the next video. So thanks very much for watching, and I shall see you soon. So we finished the video on this little starling, and I wasn't going to do any more, but I want to find out what this misfire is, and I think it's more than likely to be spark plugs. Um, could be a dizzy cap. I've got another cap there, which has some wear on it, but I just want to take a bit of a squizzy before the um, permit runs out on this car, which it's going to run out tomorrow. I only got a three day one. So let's have a look. This thing ran like a champion and then started to miss under load. I just want to have a look. The yeah, compensator lines I did put on. I think the throttle body is blocked. Um, so the compensator for the past is on. Um, I'm going to pull this up. I, it's late Sunday afternoon. So, I don't even know, well I can't get plugs at the moment, spark plugs, but we'll just pop these leads out and I'm just going to pull the dizzy cap off and have a bit of a sticky if I can get that off. I don't like aftermarket, I hate it. It does look like water's got down there though. I'm using this light, um, donated by Richard Graham. What's um, a good friend from the Wolsey Car Club, very intelligent bloke, methodical thinker, I think he's a chemical engineer. Okay, so there has been water down there. It looks like there's still water down that one. Oh. That will be our misfire, ladies and gents. Yeah, I think I've found the problem. <laughs> and true to my word, I dropped some rusty water down into the cylinder, so we have to clean these up. I need new ones, but as I said, it's Sunday afternoon. They're all burning very well. But um, I need to clean it and start it and burn that out. And there's a very rudimentary clean. Um, if you watch Alan Milliard, he, a, a genius motorcycle builder, he actually, um, he puts his plugs in the barbecue and cooks them up. Now, I've normally got a bit of tube. I normally use fuel loads on that and just screw them in. Don't know what I've done with it. <laughs> We're going to have a long day doing this. I'm going to pop a little bit of CRC, RP7. It's just a bit of a moisture dispersant in there. And I want to take this cap off. I want to have a look in here. I don't trust, and look, in, in, I was going to say, I don't trust aftermarket because, you know, they probably didn't seal very well around here, even though the bonnet was obviously off for a while and the car sat in the rain. And it was evident with some of the fittings that I never actually changed that. Oh, okay, three bolts, eight millimeter, five mil thread, pop that guy off, whoops, and, 
they're wrapped around. They're all a little different lengths. They're probably off a Camry or something like that. Or at least suited to that. But I don't really want to use them if I can avoid it. That cap looks pretty schmick. It looks a lot better than the cap I was going to put on. I'm just not convinced with these. That cap actually looks very good. I might just uh, scrape off some of that. Just that sort of white soot that hangs around where you... I just don't want to scratch anything because I don't want to make a path for its arc. But that's got really good... I would think he's changed the cap and also the leads at the same time. And he probably did the plugs as well. The plugs themselves didn't look that bad if it wasn't for the water damage. I just love <laughs> Toyota. I'll go around the block now, I think. Is it going? Yeah. This is perfect. We've got rid of that horrible misfire. Um, car drives great. So, you know, it was just no fault of the car. It was, the car um, was parted out, so the bottom was sold off, and the engine sat there in the rain for too long. And consequently, the little spark plug wells filled up with water. But I should have probably checked that, shouldn't I? Anyway, look, this is great. The only thing I've got to do, the idle is still a little bit high. We're 16, 1700 revs, which is far too high. And um, so that'll be throttle body. I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. So throttle body, cam belt, and I'll take the driver's seatbelt out and fix the switch because that's why that light's flashing there. But the rest of it is perfect. I, mean, I am, as I said yesterday, I'm miffed because it actually feels better than my green one. And that's like the same sort of thing, hamburger with a lot one of these, but anyway, look, that's it for this. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you soon. What do you reckon? She has Jesus. <laughs> Move. Come on. Up again. <laughs> 